our yields are better, our quality is definitely better. Um, and you know, in, in today's world, where the way have the way they have the potato contracts written, um, quality is is where you make your money. Yields have gone up. They haven't gone down since I switched. They've increased since I've been using Carbon. Right to the row, you can see the difference between the Carbon P program and the other company's program. The thing I like best about Carbon, you're still getting your N and your P. There's nothing magic to it, but you're just using less of it, and you're getting a, a better result out of it. It seems so much more efficient. Uh, putting that up versus the 1034. I'm very comfortable in saying that. Uh, we can cut the phosphorus rates by 30 to 50 percent. When you're on rented ground, you want to grow a good potato crop, but you don't want to leave a lot of fertilizer there when you leave. And that's easy to do with phosphorus. So we've tried to follow soil tests and put on the right amount of dry product in the past when uh, we, we know that we're probably going to be leaving some of that product behind. We noticed with the carbon technology, we were able to put in the, the planter mix as well as the mark out mix everything up front and then petiole through the summer. Those phosphorus levels stayed the same right where they should be when in past uh, programs that we've utilized they've tended to tail off through the year at, which is uh, obviously really hard to, to maintain them or to bring them back. So we felt like that's given us a, a big advantage in our, in our phosphorus program. It seems like our phosphate levels don't drop as much since we started using Carbon P. And I'm especially thrilled about the results that we've seen when we put Carbon P in a band and keep that band intact where the, the roots can get to it and it keeps the phosphorus soluble for a longer period of time. And we've been able to increase uptake by 5 to 20 percent very consistently. We have a healthier uh, root system in the spring. I mean, you know, you can just, you can just pull a, a seed piece up once they start growing and, and, and your, your uh, hair roots and everything, there's just, they're a lot better. They're, they're just stronger, there's more of them. They just, you know, the plants just seem to be healthier. Which obviously is gonna to translate to better yields. The test results show that that's true, even though it may not be uh, that obvious from the tractor seat. We've had it side by side in two different years with, with different uh, companies and different, you know, programs. And uh, there's, a visual, there's a visual difference. It flows really well. It's easy to, to, to use, and I just haven't had any problems with it at all. The carbon is very liquid. Um, mixing it with water, mixing uh, in the sprayer or, or in the planter, uh, mixed extremely well, very flowable. You know, I can carry 800 gallons on the machine. I've loaded up. I, I don't have to get out again until it's gone. On my beet planter, I use a, a jetter rolling fin that opens up the soil and then I use a stream jet nozzle that sprays it down into the ground. With the 1034, it balled up on my planter and caused a lot of planter headaches and that with the carbon P, it went on just as smooth as could be, no buildup whatsoever and the ease of that was just 100 times easier to use. We've done field trials with potatoes and sugar beets, field corn and sweet corn, wheat, barley, alfalfa, beans, and even turf grass. We feel good about the data that we have. It's hard to see responses visually very often. Uh, most of the research, and I've done many years of phosphorus research, and have only rarely seen a visual response in the field. But this year we had one trial that we had a really big response visually. And that was in Grace, Idaho, uh, potatoes. And we just saw much healthier and bigger plants. They were, uh, they were darker in color and, and just more healthy and vigorous. And it translated into about 100 sack per acre increase in uh, US number one tubers. Given the knowledge of the ground that we have, if we can utilize the carbon and know what we're putting on, I think we're going to be able to show that we can effectively raise potatoes without increasing the, the phosphorus levels in the ground, and that's what we're after.
four years ago, we, we uh, kind of did a test plot with another company, and uh, we, we put it right in the middle of the field so that it would be comparing apples to apples and oranges to oranges. All summer, on both sides of that uh, plot where we used carbon P, there was a visual difference, and the plants were healthier, um, and when we dug in the fall, the quality was better. The average yield increase for potatoes is about 40 to 50 sacks. We've seen larger increases than that. What it was able to do uh, in my beet crop this year uh, had a phenomenal uh, beet crop. With sugar beets, we're seeing about a, a two ton yield increase average without any reduction in sugar percentage. A lot of times when we do fertilizer trials with sugar beets, we get a yield increase in terms of total tonnage but we get a decrease in percent sugar. In the case of carbon P, we've been able to uh, maintain the sugar percentage and get a total increase, and so we've had a nice yield increase. With the corn, we see a pretty big response, and not just in yield, but also in just healthier plants, we tend to get a a thicker diameter on the stem. Uh, plants are a little taller and a little more robust. And uh, in, the, in addition, we oftentimes are seeing increased yield uh, with silage corn. We even did a sweet corn trial this year and got a little bit of a yield response to that too. Year after year, the last three years since we've been using it, we, we've seen great yields every year. And we're, we're running it through the pivot, through the water, and it's, it's really easy to apply. And we haven't, we've seen the same results with just using less product. With alfalfa, the work we've done with carbon P is a little unique in terms of uh, we haven't put any banded application in the soil, but instead of applied as a foliar. And it's so simple to use. I have a sprayer, a big Patriot sprayer that I spray my hay with, and I'm able to go in after every cutting and uh, just shoot that on over the top. It stays there and tied up with the soil and water, uh, takes it into the roots, and I'm seeing a response from it. And we've had very good results in terms of getting phosphorus into the plant and getting a yield response. Uh, we've got yield responses in cases where we've just applied it a single time, right, uh, as the plants are coming out of dormancy. But we've also seen responses when we've split the application and put on carbon P after every cutting. And it got a nice a rebound in terms of growth and vigor and a little bit, a little bit earlier uh, maturity so we get possibly more cuttings in the season. That potential is there. Visually, we saw uh, a faster regrowth and you know more even. Uh, it definitely had an impact on the field, and that's kind of what I like. If I can't see it, it's hard for me to believe. We're getting about 0.5 to 0.7 tons increase per application, and we're getting that during the high growth period of the plant. That's where we're getting the increasing regrowth and increase in tonnage. Definitely, at these hay prices, any ton that you get is, you know, money in the bank. It's, it's I believe, a cost-effective uh, product to put on. This year on our hay, we tried using carbon P. After each cutting, we'd go in and broadcast it on our hay, and we mix it with insecticide. It worked really well because you're going across the hay anyway to to get rid of the bugs, and we were able to to get by with using carbon P uh, after each cutting and we were able to reduce 40% less than what we've been doing in the past going on dry and yields were as good as they've ever been so I was really impressed with it on the hay also. Fertilizer prices continue to remain high, and we presume they probably will. 
uh, looking at a, a fertilizer compound where we know that we're going to be able to put on what we're going to use, it's going to benefit us in the, in the future rather than a lot of guesswork that we, we do with the dry program. We've been able to document that the phosphate that's in the fertilizer is bound to carbon containing molecules in the fertilizer and that minimizes its contact with interfering cations in the soil. And almost every time we see an increase in phosphorus uptake in the plant. And when the soil is deficient in phosphorus, that is translating into yield results. Uh, we're getting increase in, in potato yields and corn yields and we've tested beans and sugar beets and many crops and we've uh, been able to see that in low soil test P fields that we get a nice uh, response to the fertilizer at a much lower rate than what we would need normally to get a, a response.